Right, two seconds. Right, this is live with North East Boxing Blows with Francis Crowes. Today I have two very special guests, Alfie Satchel and Kevin Satchel. Alfie, in 19 wins, with 19 wins and four losses to his name, was, and I was at, is a 2021 schoolboy champion, 2022 schoolboy champion, 2022 Tri Nation gold medalist, the 2023 Junior ABA champion, which you'll be entering in the uh, NYBC Championships this year, one of your lads. Yeah. Then we've also got uh, Kevin, who is dad, who has an amateur, had 37 fights, 27 wins, junior ABA champion, NYBC champion, a senior novice champion, and also boxed for Young England before Kevin turned professional in 2010, where he's the second or third, you have to correct me on that one, Kev, I think it's, I think you're only the second mate, uh, British Commonwealth and European champion simultaneously, 16 fights, 16 wins with three knockouts. But first, we'll go back to you, Alfie, how are you doing? Sonny, you okay? Yeah, no, I like me to you. Yeah, man, good. So what got you into boxing, Alfie? What was it like growing up around your dad, son? Uh, obviously, my dad got me into boxing and uh, I've always had family who's boxed. Uh, and I've, ever since I remember being able to walk, I could punch first. Um, well, your dad said you um, were one of his biggest critics during his fights. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've watched you, mate, because I've kept an... Obviously, I'm, cause, because I boxed your dad, I've kept an eye on your career when I, you started boxing. And one thing I'll tell you, mate, you, was, you, was, you really are supreme talent. If you keep your head down, mate, with the like, people around you, which you've got at the minute, I can see you winning a world title in the future. But obviously, that's a lot of hard work in the, in the future before you do. But going into your first national title, what was it like when you picked that up, son? Um, well, it was all new to me, to be honest. I'd never been in the tournament, so I was just coming out of lockdown and... Um... I got told I was going in the school, but he didn't know nothing about weight cutting or nothing. So I had to cut a, like a kilo of weight, and it was all new to me. Uh, I got a bye bye through to the semis. Uh, I went up to Newcastle in a big arena, the Virtue Motors Arena, and I, um, I beat a lad from Blackburn uh, from Technique ABC. Beat him comfortably, just boxed on the in and out, and then next the next day I was in the final. Um, and I boxed a kid, Isaac Ward, and I, I beat him comfortably. Thought I could have stopped him, but I didn't stick it on. Obviously, it was all it was like my second fight back from lockdown. Um, with yeah. Ned, with Ned, with Ned, was a big part of that. Alfie, son. Yeah, like me, me, it was my first fight coming off lockdown, so I was proper nervous for that. So was and I. Then, yeah. And then, yeah. <laughs> Where the you next day, yeah, I was fucking. I saved myself before every fight, and then they cry after every fight <laughs> when he wins. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah. you get more nervous than he does, Kev. Oh. You get more nervous than Alfie does when Alfie's boxing. Yeah, yeah. 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 Kid, does he? He's saying, he's saying he gets nervous, but he's like the most coolest kid ever in the Well, I was just about to say that. When I've seen your highlights, Alfie, mate, in that ring, you're so calm and composed, mate. You're re- honestly one of the best talents I've seen, especially as a kid. You're a real talented. If you keep your head grounded and you've got some good people around you, you're going to do a lot of things in this sport. And I believe I've, I've said it for a long time to your dad. But your yeah. second national title, what was that like, Alfie? Did you did you expect to win it that year? Yeah, I trained hard and never because I knew the feeling of winning the first national title. And then to, to then go into the second tournament and not win it, I just wouldn't have let it happen. So I trained That's a like, good mindset to have, mate. Yeah. It's a great that. mindset, that. What's, you, yeah. what's your ambitions in boxing, mate? What do you want to achieve out the game? I want to hopefully if they put the uh, Olympics back in boxing for 2028, uh, uh, boxing back in the Olympics, I want to go there, defo, and then I want to turn pro quite early, about 19, 19 20. And, um, yeah, I think that'd be... Oh, ranks and win a world title. Another five years in the amateur game would be enough experience for you, owner, especially when the level you're boxing at, because you're going to... Uh, you're on the England squads now, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, I'm um, a boxer in England twice, yeah. You've boxed England twice, yeah. where was that, huh? On the back of the 2022 uh, schoolboy championships, he went up to Scotland. Scotland. Is that the Tri Nations? Yeah, that was the Tri Nations in Dundee, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you that's your gun your gun golden. Who did you beat the final there, Alfie? Uh, his name was Adam Fields. They had Tri Nations, Scotland, England, and Wales, but there was no Welsh kid at the weight, so they just put the two finalists of the Scotland. Yeah. yeah. But the loser of the final in Scotland on the Saturday and stopped him. And then He stopped him, yeah. They beat him and then beat the lad in the final. You're doing well. You, honestly, mate, you've won more titles, you've won more fights and titles than I did in my full career. Like you're 
and you're only 15 year old you're just getting started son you, yeah. you keep your head on the ground which you will because I know your daddy he was a very level headed man you keep your head on the ground you're going to go to the top and that, that is the truth what do you so, so you'll be won in the NYBC championships this year won't it that'll be like a step up to seniors won't it yeah, so that's um, that's the first year of the NATBC and like you sort of get a taste then of like what it what, what it's like getting older and getting into the youths and the seniors because obviously you're boxing with all like all the youths, the seniors, the um. Oh, so, you will it. It's massive experience, massive step up. But you're more than, but like I said, when I've watched your box, you're so calm in that ring. You calculate and calm it. You've got a lot of skill behind you, so oh, I don't think the step up would be a problem for you. No, it wouldn't. What do you see, uh, Kev? What do you think he won? I don't see him as an issue. Just that what do you mean? Sorry. Can you hear me? I don't see it. I think he's already there. Yeah. He's at that, that level anyway. Uh, uh, you know, I've seen it, the way he trains, the way he fights. You know, we've got, you know, you know, Peter McGrail is our fella. He comes up to me all the time. He's just like, wow, Alfie's amazing. He's just so strong. You know what I mean? He's so fast. Me, he is so I, I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem for him. I don't see, I don't see him having a problem with the setup. I don't. Do you do what you oh, yeah, I'm not, I, you don't need to speak. I don't want to speak about training or anything like I understand calls and gyms and like you keep it off cameras and stuff. But like, what's a three minutes? Is it's what are you boxing at the minute? Oh, he's a two minutes around you doing the twos, and then I'll box the twos all this year. And then next year, when I go into a youth, that's when I'll box for these. You'll be used to that, though, won't you? I'd imagine you'd be well prepared for the three-minute rounds. I can't see there being a problem for you, mate. Obviously, you, you, won, you won the junior ABAs as well this year, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I won. Boxed four times in that competition. What was that like when you won them, mate? Uh, it, was, it, was, it was... That was the best feeling out of was the three national titles, because... Um, was it? I'd, I'd been making weight from an earlier stage because I had four fights instead of the two where I'd just had in the school boys. I boxed in the uh, the pre quarters in, in Kenny and then the quarters. Kenny in, is in Kensington, but in the yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Carlisle, yeah, yeah. and then I boxed twice in Wigan. Well, you're making a name for yourself in the Amsterdam scene, mate. You read out. I, had, I interviewed um, Paul Butler a few months ago, and he was saying how well you're doing, how good you are as a, like a title champion, to be honest. Yeah. He had high, he had high words for you, mate. Yeah. That's so you made the, that. you made a good name for yourself, Alfie son. That little Paul Butler, little big at start. Eh, uh, little Paul Butler, mate, the, the yeah. one who's fighting. Yeah. Oh, well, you know what I mean. He starts rating him as well. So always got. Does he? Yeah, good things to say about That's it. what I'm saying. These are like you've got some respectable people, mate. Who always look already looking at you and seeing the talent that you are as a fighter because you are. Um, you'll be phoning your dad in some one, yeah. No, <laughs> yeah, I've already told him I'm gonna spar him. I've got so many weapons in my house. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> what did you? What did you? What was it like, Alfie? Son, as you, with your dad. Obviously, your dad, mate, is he's he's a team, especially with being one of the few fights that only be British common for you being champion since Tuesday. What was that like for you growing up, mate? What was yeah, it like well, being around? I was only like I I can only really remember like when he fought like Valerie Yankee for the European title. That's like the latest one I remember. Uh, but obviously, I remember like it, little, little flashes yep. of, like, when I was um. I was, I was only a young kid, about six, going in the gym every morning, the ERT. You know, when he was training with the pros, oh, that's the first time that I'd be running about the gym to my own little session. Paul sent me, so it was like, it was always a boss experience, just being in and around the pros at a young age. And then, obviously, I've always been I've always been um, around Paul Steve, and he's always mental. <coughs> Yeah, there you go. I saw one his back. Oh. Hello? Hello? So it's been a big experience for you, wasn't it, as a kid being around that? Sorry, mate, you're breaking up. 
So, yeah, I think so. If it's just going off, it's just shaking. Well, this is a hole. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Just sitting here, just you like. Yeah, it's a window. Just like a window. Yeah, so we gotta really get it, get the full engine and then it's also so it's just as well. The drum back of it, yeah. Yeah, just edit that out and then, and then I'll just put it back to where we're speaking. Tell you what, you speak well, you know. I know, I've always told that. I don't know, I always fucking push to my fucking, just like my answers and shit like that, and then like, shit was all, like 100%. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You got what you're saying. Yeah, I just give you a message, man. Just trying to join back there, look. He's just sent it down. Lower it down. The ring was breaking up there. Let me set another little bit of a set of shit over now. Yeah, he's a back. Right. Kai, he's a back, lads. Kayong, where you started there, Alfie's kid. What are you saying about your dad and being around the European title fight? Um, so I only really remember because I was only a kid when coming up and I only really remember when he won the, uh, the European title against Valerie Yankee um, and I'm just saying um, it's always been like a boss experience always being in and around the pros because from when we, from when I was a kid and my dad had to take me in the gym you know because he'd have to train in the morning it's always been it's always been a boss feeling being like around the pros from, from an early well, it's a ma- it's a massive experience, isn't it? It's a massive advantage I've known all the fighters that you've been around that me from a young age to be honest yeah and when you get there yourself, you're gonna have us. You already know what it's gonna be like because you've been there with your dad. You know what I mean? You've been on a big night with him. Because that, I've honestly, I've said you, you will be a world champion in the future. I don't, but like doubt that for a second, son. Yeah, so that. keep the hard work up, mate. Keep dedicated to the sport, but at the same time, remember to be a kid. Do you know what I mean? You're still a young lad. You still remember to be a young lad because if you do too much boxing, you get sick of it by army twenty six, and you don't want that. Yeah, exactly. I know. So what's your what's your ambitions? You obviously you want to be you want to be a world champion, don't you? Definitely, that's the only goal. That's all I want to do is box, and I want to be a world champion. So your main aim is to be professional, is it? It's gonna to go to college though and get get it get. Yeah, of course, mate. Don't don't forget yeah. that, Alfie, mate. Like get get an education behind you, because once you retire from boxing, you don't want to be sat there twiddling your phone. Think what they were doing life now. Do you know what I mean? You want to have something behind you. That's that's a mistake that I've made. Like I relied on boxing too much, and once I retired, I had nothing. And it's, As, uh, you don't want to be in that position, mate. But obviously, plan A. But go on. Boxing. Plan A, of course, is mate. You understand that plan A is your boxing. That's your passion, isn't it? Yeah. But I always have a plan B. Make sure plan B is just as solid and set up as plan A. Yeah. Going on to your dad, Kev. Let's talk about your career, mate. How oh, 37 fights in the Amsterdam, 27 wins, three national titles like your boy. Boy friend, professional in 2010. British European competent, uh, Commonwealth champion simultaneously. You retired as that as well, didn't you, Kev? Yeah, I did. It was 16 and all, yeah, retired. So I'm undefeated. You, um, obviously, what was the st- tell us the story again behind your retirement. Why happened? Because you really you had a well title written all over you for me. I just went, I got an injury, I got stiff to my titles and I wasn't getting no, like, major fights. I was only getting, like, my last two fights were only six rounds and eight rounds. Sorry, eight rounds and six rounds was my last fight. Was, I couldn't see nothing big. Um, and then I got, I got jumped around here and uh, I got my jaw snapped in two places. So I was kind of on, like... It was just not looking good for me, and I've got obviously I've got my family to to support, so I had to just quit and try and get work and stuff like that. So you be you've had to put your son first, haven't you? Obviously, massively, mate, at that point for money wise, which is it's a bit of it's a bit shift for you, isn't it, mate? A, a group of thugs basically have spoiled your career, haven't they? Yeah, 
Yeah, I've got I've got two boys, so I have to make sure I get some work in for them. Do you know what I mean? Awesome. Survive. Well, that's it. I understand that, mate. Your family, man. What was it like? Because when you turned fresh out, Kev, you didn't, you weren't planning on winning titles, were you? I didn't think I'd win a title, no. Uh, when I went to box, even originally won a box as a kid, I had, I had oh, no idea. I don't like you're a massive talent, though, aren't you? Because like, your gym is the first time the term professional in a long time, wasn't it? With you, I've done it for a while, I've done uh, no, I don't, I don't. It's been years. I, I, I think I'm the first person under Paul and Mick Stevo to turn professional, with along with Farag, Ryan Farag. But I was, I had the first fight, <laughs> and I think I was the first person that Paul actually cornered as a pro. And now he's now he's doing his son as well, isn't he? Yeah. No. Well, yeah. I know. I do his. I do his corner. Do you do his corner, yeah, Kev? Yeah, yeah. I'm his trainer. I think that's a good. Thing for me though, because I think that's a good thing for you. You've, you've obviously go on. What you said? I say I'm Paul, and I mean Peter. All the loads of lads, Peter, two pieces, Alan. They've all been in the corners with them. Well, I tried my best to be in this corner because otherwise I'll just be twitchy. I'll be so nervous. <laughs> on the end. Yeah, it does it. It's no good when someone you love fighting is it? Mate? You'd rather fight yourself, wouldn't you? It's nerve wracking, man. But John, uh, do you know what you need to tell us, mate, about that story when you about Walter Rogers? <laughs> That's the added in it. Yeah, so I've, I've, I've just won the I've just won the European title. Um, I think we rank and went up to it was classed as third, but there was no number one slot. So technically, that's second. So we get told that. This 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 kid this kid from um, from China called Zhu Ximing, Macau in China, he's won the he won the, the gold medal twice in the Olympics, and um, he's having this world title fight after the day after I, well in the morning of the of the next night of, of when I'm fighting, and um, get told we get told you know they've, they've said to us if. You, your lad wins on this this show, then you can have the first title shot against us when he wins the world title, and you just come over to Macau in China. Now that's like the Vegas of China. If you yeah, it is massive, mate. Fucking lovely. Anyway, so they they get me. And I'll be honest, they get me some fucking bum to beat. I'm meant to fight him over seven rounds, but like. When 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 they get to the weigh-in, like this little pop belly fucking look like he's been dry. He looked like he's been dry back then. And I've been cutting weight for weeks, like getting from like looking 62, 63 kilos to like fifty-two. I think this one, this was on the super play race. And I got on the scales, finally made the weight, made up so I can hydrate and I can eat and stuff like that. Then this little pop belly gets on and he looks like he's just, he looks like he's got a big thing going, do you know what I mean? Like he's just rocked up. <laughs> weight and I'm thinking, he hasn't made the weight, he hasn't made it, he's way ever, have you? So it turns out that he wasn't, he was like seven stone ten, seven stone, yeah, seven stone ten, I think he was. And they were like, you two can't fight. You're far too much away from each other um, in weight-wise. So the only option is, is if you keep your weight still down and weigh in tomorrow, and you can put on weight tonight. And I was like, fuck you, I've just been, I've just been like dieting for 10 weeks, and now you're making me do it again for another night. So anyway, I come in the next day at 8, 7, and he comes in about, I think he come in at like 8, 3, or something like that, and don't get me wrong, he had a fucking, he had shit, he had the shirts on, he had a pair of boxing things on, and he had palm coins stuck in his t-shirts and everything to weigh him down. <laughs> so, <laughs> but the fight finally gets made, and um, the same, basically, you've just got to get past this lad, and then once you pass this lad, you'll uh, do him and go fight tomorrow morning, um, and you'll get a shot at the title. I was like, sounds so 
I did get told to take him like three rounds, but then he'd come out swinging like he was solid, like over the top. And I thought, oh, even though you're a little bit lighter than me, you could, if you hit me one of them, like he's lighter than me, but if he hits me with one of them, I might go out. I might go asleep. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, we'll just put him down in advance. Get on, get on Sally to the, um, to be interviewed and stuff like that. Um, it's just to, to call out to Shiming, say to him, I want that title that you're going to win and stuff like that. That comes only goes and lo- loses that fight. I was. How did it? That's your world title shot gone there, isn't it? Yeah, it's my world title shot gone. People say to me, well, why didn't you fight the, the one that The one that won got himself out, out of prison by laying out a box, apparently where he's from. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he, he just put us like, a, like another person like that's been arrested in one of them jails where they're all like you know scrunched up in one cell he got out of prison by laying out a box and then so he's, he's just a mad bastard isn't he yeah he's got no fans you know what I mean so like he wouldn't be a cell mate he wouldn't be a cell for both but a fair four box out would he Exactly, he wouldn't say he wouldn't sell no show, do you know what I mean? So like I was like, ah, oh, devastated there, there's new wheels like us, yeah. Gone. <laughs> That's a nightmare. Uh. Ranked in every division at the time and Mr. World title shot just went see you later. <laughs> how would you think how would you think that fight would have went? Like Kevin against Sushi, I would think your style would have match against him. We'd have battered him. This this kid is famous in Macau. He was on the film The Transformers. He's on Transformers 4, I think it is. He's, he does a scene in that where he, he boxes someone. Um, he was well, where he was. He's a superstar, bro. Exactly, but we, we know for a fact we'd have beat him. We I think you'd have been too big and too sharp, wouldn't you? I think I would have been too big for him. Uh, we were I like, do, because we you were big for the weight. Yeah, I used to, I used to come in about. I know with the WBC, you're not allowed to be more than ten pounds. The next day, are you? You get a second weigh in. Yeah, you last. do. Yeah. But I used to weigh in at eight stone, and then by the time I'd left my house at like four to go to the, the arena, so it was usually in the Echo Arena. Um, I'd be like eight stone thirteen. I'd put on thirteen. Day. That's massive, that mate. That's yeah. a lot of weight overnight, that. No, it, even in the ring though you weren't even in the ring you didn't blow up massive did you even put that weight on no I mean that was me not being greedy as well I could have put well more on but I, I you know Paul Steve always said to me you know don't put too much weight on don't don't overdo it go, always go into the ring hungry like not starving but hungry like me yeah and, I think it was like terminology for basically hungry for the fight. It's, it's a good, it's, it's a good thing as well, though, because I made a mistake against. I can't think who it was on our box, but I had a big massive meal before the fight, and I was in the ring. My, I just felt brutal, mate. You can't, you can't do nothing when your your belly's heavy in that ring. You're not performing. You're not oh, going to yeah. fight well. Well, because all the all all the blood's gone from your brain to your stomach to digest it, so you're not thinking as sharp as you could be. It's back. So when you won the British title, obviously that was against Chris Edwards. Right? What did you find that fight like, Kev? So when when I fought Chris Edwards, like obviously you fought me, and you know my my height. Like I'm not massive, but I'm taller than you, are I? So like you see, you, you felt me. massive to me in the ring. You felt massive, honestly, yeah. you did. So like I'm I'm taller than you, and I'm a lot taller than Chris Edwards. So the, we had the feeling. That Chris Edwards would expect us to stay on the back foot and box and stuff like that. So he would have been training to come at me and stuff like that. But instead, yeah. we just thought, hit him, go for it, get in there, get stuck in and push him on the back foot because he won't be used to going on the back foot because he was always a come forward fighter. He was always a, like a prop brawler. Yeah, he was, yeah. Yeah, so we just decided to do that. And don't get me wrong, he... he the one thing I can remember about like what he done to me was he was literally on the inside. He was just doing little shots like that whilst we were on the inside, and I felt it on my stomach. And I was like, "Oh, you know what I mean?" But once I knew that I was stronger than him, bigger than him, 
I, I, I knew that was he, he was going out. But did you bully him? Yeah, I kind of bullied him towards the end as well. Yeah, I did. I like. I thought. Was... I thought that when I boxed him after the first round, I thought he's weak as shit. Him like. There's no, he can't yeah. hurt me. Do you know what I mean? So I just put it on him after that, and I thought I bullied him a bit. And you were a lot bigger, and you were a lot better than me. So I expect you to bully him a lot, to be honest. With you. He well, well you stopped him. Did you? St you stopped him, didn't you? Yeah. So wait, I, I put him down in the fifth round, and then in the sixth, um, like you, you, rest his soul, because sadly he's passed away now. Um, yeah, I know. Rest his soul, bless him. There's, a, there's when you see the highlights. At the end of the fifth, when he when he's, he's just survived the round, you see him do that, and you can see the pain face. So then, um, six rounds, um, just like carried on pursuing the body, and you hear Paul Smith on it saying, I think he needs to go to head so that he can disguise the shots to the body. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. I was, I was gunning for the body because but you knew you could hurt him, hurt him type thing. And um, yeah, he, he goes down again and the, he gets back up and the referee counts him to eight and then just says, no, that's that's enough. You know what I mean? You, you've seen too much punishments. You were red off, then, you were red off form as well, mate, at that point. Yeah, I dropped to my knees and I'm just like, I'm just lying there with my head and my hands on the, on the canvas, like so relieved that I've just won my second title. In the echo of being it in front of thousands of people, and Paul and Mick jumped in the ring and they both got on there. And he's on top of me, going, You've done, you've done it, you've finally done it, Kev. You know what I mean? And it was such a relief. What was the best title? Obviously, you beat Paul Edwards for the Commonwealth title, you beat Follery Yankee for the European title, mate, who your son just mentioned there. What was the big, what was the best win about you for the three? Um. I don't, know, I don't know if he's going to listen to this back, but my best victory was Paul Edwards. Because it was a second. Well, Paul Edwards, people forget Paul Edwards. He was a, he was a standout amateur, Paul Edwards. One, he beat everyone in the amateurs, mate. And he was a very he, good professional fighter. He knew Campbell. He won the senior ABAs. I won the senior novices, which is under 20 fights. He won the actual senior ABAs and he beat Luke Campbell on the way to do that. And Luke Campbell's a world class amateur. No, and then he exactly, and then he went on to win the British as well. I uh, thought he beat me twice in the amateurs. He says three times, but Paul, I'm telling you now, it's twice if you listen. <laughs> <laughs> so, just a, well, I fought in for my common title. Now, just I've stepped up from six rounds to 12. It's my first title fight ever, and I beat Paul, and it was such a it was. Like well, uh, most of the most of his friends, they all lived to the other side of the road for a meeting. You know what I mean? They were all like they were, they all, but we we didn't get on at the times. We also we yeah. all sound all sound with each other now, but they were all his mates and they were all in the crowd. So, um, we, Chelsea's gone into extra time and then penalties. But I meant to be doing the card on David Price versus Sexton, and now the show might the show nearly got called off. You know what I mean? Because it was getting that late. But he said, well, you're not going to be on the undercard now. You're going to be after Pricey. So Pricey gets in first and Pricey stops his opponents in like six rounds as well. So then I found it, lucky enough he did, because then we started the time for me and Paul to get in. Go on, Sky. So all, the, all the ringside tickets are sold by Pricey. Big every big prospect. Do you know what I mean? They are all got up and got off because Pricey's already fought. So then all my fans were able to jump into the ringside seats. Do you know what I mean? All of us were able to jump into the ringside seats. They were close enough, but just like one side, my fans all there. You'll see it on the video on YouTube. And then all of us are there. All of the ones that are there is fans. They're all the people that tried to like terrorise me and my little brothers and stuff like that. Yeah. So they're all sitting there. And when it be their main boy, Paul Eddie, they all just got up. And fucked off, and it was just such a relief to see them. Like, you know, it like I defeated you, and then they all started like being nice to me after it, climbing up my ass. Oh, you're sad, you, you know, you're all right, stuff like that. So that was that's that's the reason why that was the best fight of my life. 
And well, then, it's, uh, it's an in-city rivalry. It's an in-city rivalry as well. And the Kevin, there's that much talent where you live, mate. It's like a conveyor belt, isn't it? Like Alfie will find out in his career now. He'll beat some kid around Liverpool. Who'll end up being a rivalry as a pro. Do you know what I mean? Because there's that much talent around your town. Like, there's going to be two or three from Alfie's generation that's going to turn fresh and do well, including Alfie himself. Do you know what I mean? So he's, he's probably a, what Alfie, what, like you, just like you when you box Paul as an amateur and then went up and boxed him as a professional. Alfie probably do that himself. Like he'll box him as an amateur. Your way and then fight them fighting again as a professional because yeah. it's the town, the town mate, is full of towns. It was like a local derby, do you know what I mean? So there was a lot on the line. It's a massive mean? derby, isn't it? It's their it mean more. Obviously, it doesn't, it doesn't make me pass though, it just it means more. You know, when you get a win like that under your belt, doesn't it? And it was such a good fight as well. Uh, but I had your favorite going to that fight. I'm, I'm, I think I've told you that in the past. I, I like because I boxed, I think I boxed a pair by that point, and going into that fight. I just knew when when being inside the ring with his both, as, which I see the same in you, by the way, Alfie son. Like when I box you, mate, I seen you had that killer mentality and the killer mindset. You know what I mean? Like it was no matter what you wanted that win that fight in that night. Even that our first fight, it was like you shot away your best asset, really. you shot away your height and your reach to basically to meet me in the middle of the ring and have a tear at me because that's what I like to do. And you you basically wanted to beat me at what I was doing. Do you know what I mean? That's that's the mindset you had and in, in the rematch you adjusted a lot better and beat me comfortably a lot more comfortably because you used your boxing skills and assets which you had a lot like uh, over me big time mate yeah. but you like you said he's got the ment- I've seen it in his eyes when I've watched his highlights he's got a killer mentality or son and you had the same thing so that's why I believed going into that fight I picked you uh, beat Edwards he's still not going to beat me right he's still not going to beat me <laughs> <laughs> Joe it is. I think that's um Do you know when I think that's best off by Paul where we I we fought in the equestrian centre in Aintree and in Aintree at race course there's four or five different buildings and there's the weighing room where all the jockeys get weighed in, but that's where we've done our weighing. So that's where you've done your warm up and then you had to get a van and it'd drive you from the weighing room to the equestrian and it was like about a hundred metre walk. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But we had to get in the van. So when we got finished the fight and we got out, we we had to get driven right back to the weighing room to get changed again. And I remember Jazza hanging out the window with my belly, like, Way! acting like we just robbed a bank or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, who was the favourite going in that fight, Kev? Who's who was the favourite of the bookies me going at that? Uh, him, Paul. I was was Paul the favourite going at that? Yeah, I was oh, if I knew that at the time, I'd have put some money, I'd have made some money in you there. Cause I, I, I'm not taking nothing away from Paul. He's a brilliant fighter, do you know what I mean? He was a standout amateur, he was a top fighter. It goes to show that level that you had to beat him. But I just knew going at that fight, mate, you'd have more... I, I just knew Paul. you'd have more of that mentality to beat him, to dig in deeper. Yeah, I thought Paul beat Chris Edwards in the previous fight that he had. His previous fight that he had. Um, he did beat Chris Edwards. He should have got the decision. He did. Should have got the decision. I was. I watched that. I was in the Olympia with you. I was with you. Yeah. I thought he. I thought he won that. Um, no, he did. Mate. I agree with you there. He did. Paul's a good. That's what I'm saying. Like. Paul losing to you is nothing against Paul just because she just shows that level at you because Paul's a tough fighter so he doesn't want to watch this and think Joe what I didn't do as good as I should blah 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 Paul's a brilliant fighter mate just shows that level you were at I just might not have been his day or you know well, I just think mate stars are stars and I think also, the hunger and the art, like we're going to why, like after we speak, speak about this, but hey, we're going to why you started boxing. I think that's what gives you that killer mentality. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's what gives you the edge in that fight. And in the program, mate, as Alfie will find out in the future because he will be a professional. It's a it's a doggy dog world in the program, and it like you forget about when you turn professional, Alfie, mate, and you're going to do amazing things in the amateurs, but scrap all that as soon as you turn professional and 10 year career yeah. starting again from zero because it's a different world in the curve. Yeah. yeah, it is different. Like I, again, I didn't want to box. I remember Paul telling me, you, "We're going to get your medicals and you're going to box." And I said, "No," and I was like flapping it. And I got told by the lads, a few lads older than me, "I have a goal, Kev. You're quite good." Once I had my first fight, that was it. Then I was hooked. But when I same pro, I got like I lost. I lost to Jazza in my last fight. 
for the senior ABAs. Um, and I was going to college and stuff like that. And then Paul and Mick said to me, do you want to go pro? I was like, really? Pro? And I said, just thought, well, you know, that's like, you, you get dope for that. So you get you, you get paid well if you make if you me. So I thought, Sans, but I didn't think I was going to be anything. And then it was like, it was a while into it that Paul said to me, if you don't, if you can't beat someone like that or get through a spa with someone like that, I won't mention the name, but if you can't get through that, you've got no chance of being world champion. Now, he's only just being born. So he's like, he, he's, he's a baby. And in my head, I thought, I need to make sure that I've got something to provide for my kids, so I better start knuckling down and doing it properly. So the diet completely went better, the training went better, the mentality went better. I remember thinking, sitting in the living room watching telly, thinking, oh, I can't be arse running. And then I just snapped and went, do you know what, that's weakness, that. You're going to run every single day now until the fight. And then every single camp, I'd run 70 days non-stop. And like you've our kids had Jed as they are well, he'd do every single day with me. Do you know what I mean? He wouldn't miss he wouldn't miss we'd end up doing like three I think the most Yeah. I think there was like three How many times fifteen hundred and fifty four miles we um we 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 ran in one camp over seventy days. We it was we was it, looking back, it, it, it might might have been a bad thing. I mean, it's, it's like not such a bad thing because I didn't lose. But you know, you've got to take them rest days, stuff like yeah. that, and that's what keeps. That's what yeah. keeps telling him constantly running. On to Alfie, mate. Listen to your dad, because I promise you now, right? Even though, because you, you know, obviously you've got auto and stuff like that, mate. And I did growing up, right? And you, when when you're artistic, when you're passionate about something, you're suit. Your passion is boxing. That's why you're so good yeah. at it, in my opinion, because it it helps you massively autism, you right. If people don't realise, they're very clever, very clever people, artistic people. But when when they whatever they're passionate about, the super passionate about, his, about, and they'll do it his, all day. His brother, my kid, he's got autism. He's nine. Has he got? Has he? Yeah. But like, when your passion is your passion, Alfie is boxing in a kid. Yeah. But well, listen, I promise you now, listen to your dad, mate, because the rest, the rest days are just as important as the days when you're doing big hard runs or good spars and stuff like that. They're just as important. Your body needs to recover, mate. If you want to perform when you get in that ring every time at your best, you have to have them rest days. So going into the camps. So honestly, okay. listen to your dad, mate, because he knows what he's talking about. He's been there. And he's done it himself. And that's, that's the only thing you'll need to learn in your career, mate, because you've got the talent, you've got the skill, you've got the people around you. The only thing you'll need to learn is to listen. And if you listen to your dad, you will. Don't go far. Yeah, definitely. You will. So, um, go, uh, go and t talk about your fight with Ian Butcher, Kev. When yeah. didn't you have a bad injury going into that fight, mate? Sorry? Didn't you have a rib injury going into the fight with Ian Butcher? No, oh, that was with Luke Wilton. Was that with Luke? Oh, with Luke Wilkin, it was, wasn't it? Uh, what was that uh, fight like? Out, so about the, the seventh week of a ten week camp, I'm I'm out. I'm sparring up in Kirby, um, and a, a second I'll just take this little weird clip to the side, and I went, "Oh, it's weird that." And I've gone to the corner and I told Mick, and Mick went stopping the spar. I said, "Nah, I can carry on." He was like, "No, we're stopping the spar." So he's gone, gone, get changed. By the time I got out the ring and went to the changing rooms, I couldn't move. I could not move. I ended up in the hospital. And it didn't go down as a broken rib. Or what was it, crack? I don't, they didn't tell me whether what it was. They just went like, yeah, here's something, here's some morphine, go on. And now I've got a proper sticking out lump on my stomach. Do you know what I mean? So it was weird. So that was the seventh week. So I had to take time out that week just to let it heal. And bear in, and bear in mind, like, this is so seven weeks. So about three days later, I get a knock about half six in the morning. And I open the window, look down, said to this, who the, the fuck are you? 
what do you want? He went, and open. I was like, oh, sounds. But because I've been prescribed this morphine by the doctor, it didn't go down as a drug. Like, you know, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. I've been go down, it's not like that. Um, but so I, I only went into that fight about 70 80 percent. You know, I wasn't completely fit. Um, and you know, it was I, a good fight, mate. It was a skiller. I had to I had to spar the ninth week because you tape it off on the tenth week, don't you? The, the yeah. The fight and the thing going, and then I'm I'm sparring in the gym, and I had Peter McGrail, Brandon Diod, Andrew Kane, and Vinny Oligan to spar three. They done three rounds a piece with me, and I was trying my best to hide my rib because. I didn't want to admit that it was fucking hurting still. I wanted to go and fight to get money, to win money. Do you know what I mean? Win the yeah. Thing. So the last round, the last 10 seconds of the round, Vinny catches it. And I, I mean, I don't know, the poker face I must have put on to, to convince Paul that it was fine and it wasn't hurting. It was just like, I was like, yeah, that is sound. Yeah. <laughs> there he was at. Vinny, you're like, he's, he's and he's, he was no mug even Luke Wilton, mate. Was he? He was a good oh, fighter, mate. No, no. And then um, I, I even I, when I was that was in the February and, and then in the July I was go I was fighting Butcher and um, I went to Ireland. And Luke helped us. They were boss over there. Brought proper lovely lot. Then they put us up. They pick, he picked me up every single day to go and train with them, spar with them. We went, like, we run, he ran with me and everything to help me fight for this butcher fight. And then a four, a four butcher. And uh, I think I'd done too much running in that camp because I went from 300, 300.5 miles in 70 days to 350.4 miles. I remember the numbers, the starting there. So I think I went a little bit too much, like I've just been saying about the age. I should have took more rest time and stuff like that. Yeah. Anyway, that Things though, mate, that's why obviously that when you that's when you're telling your son to uh, take rest, it's because you know you've done the mistake yourself, haven't you? Do you know what I mean? You're speaking from experience, mate. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's why I, that's why I'm telling them. Um, yeah, then he, he put me on my arse in the second uh, but yeah. And uh, he, he Is it the first time you've been put down that, Kev? That's the first time as a pro, yeah. As a pro, that's was it the last time, time as well? Yeah, it was the last yeah, time, yeah. Until he does it. Was it the only time he got put down? So I wonder if the pro. Well, <laughs> but yeah. that was the only time he got put down with Festival so wasn't it against uh, Wilton? Yeah, oh, Butcher, yeah. sorry. And to be honest with you, I think it was an illegal shot. So it was a bit above the air, but I do, I do remember like being like Bambi on ice, going like that. Shit, grab him, yeah, yeah. grab him. Grab him and he just went wah 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 before I shot him. <laughs> and went down and I dashed and I fell to the ground. And then I got up and I'm like, yeah, I'm all right, I'm all right. And I'm holding me close like that. Also looking over the referee's shoulders and I can see Butcher he is itching, itching to get out of his corner. To <laughs> so all my boxes, that, you know, like, bit yeah. Scary. Boxing went out the window, and there's a, there's a picture somewhere, but I, I just basically just went, what? What? Like, like I was on a street fight or something, and he kind of backed off and thought, because you'll be backed off there, because he really hit me again. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, my joke is, though, kidology can be massive in fights. It is, yeah. It gave me a, it gave, it gave me a couple of more seconds to regain my consciousness, you know what I mean? It does, if you know what you're doing. If you're clever enough to act in them little moments like that, they can get you through the little hard parts and fights where you can go. On, you eventually go on to win the fight. You know what I mean? Because that's that. If if you didn't do that, there, he'd probably try, he'd probably try to steamroll you. He would have been. He would have been. He just ran at you when he was like unreal. Yeah. So this season, Alfie, what you do, is this season? You are you going into the boys clubs, Alfie kid? What's this? Which is the NYPW. Yeah, this season I'm not going into the boys clubs. Yeah. 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 You when should... you're going in the NYBC oh. this season, aren't you? Um, yeah, they should. They start around November time. Um, is that when they are Christmas time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
when you when you start, yeah. go, uh, we, do, do you get do you manage to get club straws easy enough? Club fights easy enough now. Um, I'm not too sure. I don't really like get involved with any of the matchmaking. But obviously, you're getting a big. He's getting a big name for himself, isn't he, Kev? He's getting a good. He's getting a good, respectful name for himself. So you're going to find it hard to match him up, aren't you? It is. It is getting harder to match him up. Do you know what I mean? We have to get people to come from out the way and stuff like that. Yeah, and that's what I was thinking that there, mate. It must be hard to match him up now because you're only 15 year old lad and you've got three national titles and a tri nation title to your belt already. You're gonna find it hard to match up, especially with your style. You're not gonna be, a, you're gonna be extremely hard to beat, and you're gonna be hard to look good to look against. See what I mean? So the matchmaking, I think, eventually you'll be stuck at, on the England fight, won't you? Yeah. Well, your... Hopefully, boxing. I'm looking to box on our next show in October. I think it's October when, the 18th. What a show! When's, it, when's the show? When is your home show? October 18th. I'll try. Hey, I'll try and come down. Like you know. I'll try and yeah. come watch him. I will because I'm a good watcher. I don't I, like. I've watched, kept an eye on you since a kid. Um, through your dad's heart, like we put on Facebook, went like that sort of stuff. But I've never. I do, it would be good to watch you live, mate. It would because I genuinely believe you'll be a world champion in the future. Yeah, but um, when is it? Mm. It's October eighteenth. He does bring a crowd. Like he's got, he's got loads of fans. Like he, it's like at least fifty people come to see. I him. see. Yeah, send me keep that, me keep me keep me informed about that, Kev, mate. Because I'll come down, I'll get the train down, we'll come watch him, mate. And um, we we'll have a I mean, you'll have a catch up as well, mate. It'll be good to see yeah. you in person, mate. Martin Power fight. Thought about that, yeah. Kev, mate, because you put him down early, didn't you? Yeah, that was me. Fi- that was the first time I'd ever put anyone's on I, as a pro. I've done it in sparring to certain people, but it was the first time that I'd ever put anyone's on. Um, we 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 changed our tactics a little bit. We, we I used to box like that, like, like I did with you. But yeah, that was fourth fight before the the, the then the fifth fight and then before the sixth fight. Um, we started, you know, being a little bit more loose and stuff. A bit more like, arrogant in the yeah. ring. Like he's not arrogant, but confident more. Confident. That's what I'm saying, mate. It's a good thing. Like he is, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's what I was just about to say there, because your son has it in abundance, doesn't he? he? Like, it's not arrogance, it's only not, it's just believing in yourself in the ring, because outside the ring, you're not an arrogant person, do you know what I mean? But in the ring, you like to be cocksure and stuff for you, like yourself, because you, you just have to back yourself 100%. And that's yeah. when you fight, fight more of your guards up, you, it's like you had less belief in yourself, do you know what I mean? Go inside the ring, if that makes sense. Well, it was January the twenty second that you, we we had the show, and I was just meant to fight another person from like Ukraine or something like that. But Paul Edwards was meant to fight Martin Power that day, and for some reason they pulled out of the fight. They he must have got injured or something like that. Um, so Paul and Mick Stevo, they said to Steve Woods, "Get him someone. Get to you know, stop getting him these like." Easy fight, get him something. And he, he, Steve Wood must have tried to call the book. Went, well, what about Martin Power? And, and go for six rounds. So they went, this is three days before the, the show. So they came to me and went, Kev, you're being offered um, a fight against Martin Power. It's not four rounds, though, it's six. You'll get an extra grand. You know what it's like. I'll oh, wait the money. Shit. Yeah. Um, hey, um, I've gone, yeah, go ahead, I'll take it. And he was like, do you want to know what he's doing? And I was like, no, not really fucking asked. He's, he's, he's got to fight. Do you know what I mean? So, like, I get thrown in the... Ch- so all the scousers, David Price, or all, 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 the, all the scousers that were on the show, I think, like, I think, I think Nathan was on it, Nathan Bruff, I think he was, I don't know, it was all the scousers got put in the fancy dressing rooms. And I got put in the dressing rooms with all the foreigners. No way. And Martin Power got put in the scouse corner because they expected him to be face away. So I get in the ring and I've got this camera in my face. Did you start thinking it was my boxing? What? Sorry. Did you, at that point when you were in the way changers, mate, and he's in the home changers in your city, did you think, oh my, I keep boxing here? Am I thinking what? Do you know what I mean? 
Were you were you thinking, Jake? Obviously, cause you're you're a scouser yourself, aren't you? And be, to be in the way change rooms, mate. Were you thinking like? We you actually sat there thinking oh, we actually boxing it? Because that just speaks of volumes about your opponent, doesn't it? Yeah, well, that's... Well, but I didn't know. I didn't really give a shit. I was just ready to fight and stuff like that. To get in the ring, and for the first time in my professional career, um, I've got a big camera in my face like that. I didn't know it was going out live on Sky. I never had a clue. <laughs> I didn't know. They didn't even tell me like that. So... His granddad is sitting in his house in, from three miles away from mine and he just randomly puts on the boxing and goes, it's Kev. <laughs> and he's like, no one knew, so I've got this camera and this guy's glaring at me like that, in, like in the ops corner. But second hand, I clip him with a, a right hand and he goes down and I half remember kind of half standing over him and thinking, yeah, take that. Sorry, you were back, mate. Sorry, I don't know what's going on today, Kev. We'll carry on what you're saying there, mate, about you shocked about we we'll go up to where you were shocked that you got up. Yeah, like I was shocked that he got up, but ten more seconds in the sixth round and or oh, for the seventh round. He had this stop. Hello? Yeah, he's back. Go on, turn. Keep going. Um, yeah, so I, I definitely reckon I would have stopped him, but you can see him wobbling at the end of the fight. That was like my biggest win. But to help sell tickets and stuff like that, I always used to make sure that I threw on an after party and have a buffy and all stuff like that. You know, like, so people are getting a full night out out of it. So I bounce into the um, yeah. book and it's getting me plays on, on the telly. And I was like, whoa, that's weird, that. And I was probably shocked. You know what I mean? I, I was on telly. It must have been a good feeling. Yeah, it was boss. Was it a good feeling, Kev? On the, when I fought Paul Eddie, the next day, I went to my local town, my, my town, and I went for something to eat in the 80s. And um, I'm on, I, I've gone in, and as I've gone in, I've just been, I'm, in, I'm walking to the rink, and I, I'm, I'm boxing on the telly in the 80s. And I went... Whoa, talking to the one <laughs> behind the bar. And that, that was me boxing last night. And she went, yeah, what sounds, what you want. And I thought, what? Yeah. <laughs> she I watched. I'm, I know, I remember watching you fight against my power, mate. Definitely not getting it to you now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember watching your fight against Power. I was sat at home watching it, but I knew I knew it was going to have me about who you were still fighting. And Johnsy, mate, I was shocked that he even got up from that shot in that second round. I even managed to get through the fight, to be honest. I, I, I was shocked after when I got out the ring. Paul and Mick said, Do you know, he's had 28 fights, 22 wins, and 10 by knockouts, and he's former British champion. And I was like, What? This is my seventh. <laughs> This is my seventh fight. <laughs> it shows the level you're at, though, doesn't it? Right move, though, wasn't it? Because it got me into title fights then. Exactly, mate. You, you, that got you a shot away from being a world champion, really, didn't it? Apart from bad luck. Do you know what I mean? Closely. You are very close to, to that. After that, you are very close to the two can fight. Uh, what, yeah. do, you, do you have any regrets in your career, Kev? Well, sorry. Do you have any regrets on your career, mate? Quitting. But I had to. Do you? I, I miss it so much. I've always missed it. You know what I mean? It's it's be it's been like it's been devastating over the years. Don't everyone always says this to me, like, aren't you gutted and stuff like that? So they am gutted. But the reason I'm not is because now I've got 
a fo- like I, I, I'm, t- I'm a trainer at the gym. I've got all the kids saying, and I want every single one of them to do. But oh, she do. Know, knowing that my, um, my, my, my son, my blood is going to be bigger, star than me. Makes me more proud than anything. Makes me happier than anything. Do you know what I mean? Well, so, yeah, I think. I think you proved that, mate, when you stopped boxing at the time, obviously, to put Alfie first, you know what I mean, to get the money for him. I think you proved that, like, he's your, he's your priority, mate, over yourself a long time ago. Um, you did underachieve, in my opinion, because you would you would have won a world title. You had a world title written all over you, and I think there's a few of your opponents that would say that as well, including other people in boxing. You, what, you're one of Derry Matthews' favourite fighters. I was talking to Derry the other day, he was telling me... So, before Teddy always talks highly of me, do you know what I mean? Always, if it's, 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 it's someone comments, like someone done a comment the other day on Facebook saying, you know, which box did you think could have went definitely for the world title, but his career was cut short or whatever, who is it? Or he ended his career too short. And Teddy just commented my name out of all the boxes that he knows, he commented my name. He knows. He, he, he says a lot though, doesn't Kevin? Because I, I, compl- I completely agree with you, mate. You, you were a top, top talent, and it shows. It goes to show what talent your son is, because his son could potentially reach another level. He's got that in him, and hopefully, with the right guidance around him, mate, with the good luck on his side, keep out of trouble on the streets, you will reach that level, son. And I believe that, and I'll, I'll be rooting for you all the way. I really will. Oh, um, I think, I think I was seventeen when I, when I. Uh, won my third national uh, like amateur title, national title. Um, sixteen when I boxed for England, but third title was thing young. He was thirteen. I was fourteen. Fourteen. When I was you know what I mean? He's already had his third. He's still got a big amateur career to go. He's still got years to go. Do you know what I mean? He's still he's got. Just... F- well, by I'm um, by I'm um, Alfie turned fresh, so he's probably been uh, with hard work and hopefully good luck. You'll be you've been the Olympics, you'd have been to the World Championships, you'd have been to the European Championships. That's something you never like got experience, isn't it? That's before he turned for Is that your target, Alfie? What? Is that your target, son? European Championships, World Championships and Olympics? When, if we win another junior WBA title this year, well this season, next year, I can um, I can go to Sign Nations and then I get a European assessment, which means that season I go to the Europeans. And then hopefully uh, you can go to Wales and the juniors as well. As long as you grab them opportunities, mate, when they come, trust me, you'll be on them England squads like, continuously because you I watch boxing, mate. I study the sport um, and you're one of the best talents I've seen. You're a real, real top talent, mate. But just take your dad's advice on board when he tells you to rest, actually rest, because I promise you now he's got your best interest at heart. No, he's. Take Paul's advice. He's one of the best coaches. And Paul's, yeah, obviously, you take all the coaches' advice. I'm not just on about your dad, I'm on about Evan around you. Do you know what I mean, Paul? Your dad, Evan around you. Take the advice on board, mate. Listen to what they say. And the sky's the limit for your kid because you've got the talent. You're just about taking it, it's about putting it right. They're telling you to do something. It's not for them, it's for you. Yeah. Uh-huh. Once. And Angie, you've got a big future, mate. I'll have a room for you. Like I said, I'll come down to your club show next month. Let me keep you in touch, Kev. Um, keep me two tickets. Get me two tickets sent over, mate, because I'll, I'll buy them off you. And um, me and I'll also come down and watch you. Can you pay on the door, yeah? Yeah, it's just yeah. a tenner. No, spot on. Now, come to, keep, me in t- keep me informed with that, Kev, because I'll come down, mate. Will yeah, do, mate. I definitely will. And yeah, you go to the boxing night, aren't you, Alfie kid? What's he? You go to the boxing tonight, mate. I'm going to Smith Human tonight, Manchester. Yeah. What's, your, what's your predictions? Uh, Smith late stoppage. Yeah, Smith Smith takes care of you, banged on you every day of the week. I'm going to go with Smith round six or seven. Yeah. And I, I, have, don't, I think I'm you, going between six and round six and round nine myself, like for Smith. I think it'll be a little bit closer just because of Eubank's ego. Um, I think it'll be a little bit closer this time, but it'll be the same outcome, mate. Smith is a. Is, for me, I don't know who will agree with me, but for me, he's the best out of out of a t- very talented family. He's the most all round world level fighter for the, out of the lot of them. Even though the, all all five of them are uh, top talents, but I I always leave the highest out of them. Um, and I think even now, me, even though he's probably slightly past his best, he's still a level or too much for Chris Eubanks. You and he, yours will be definitely Chris Eubanks. He goes too fucking much. He's 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 a showman. He wants to like act it. 
Do you know what I mean? Like he thinks it's a Rocky movie or something like that. Yeah, he does, mate. He thinks he's in a movie, he does. Yeah, and Lee, where Liam straight down to business, like, lads, who are you talking to? Like, let's sort this out now properly. Let's just yeah. Oh, Liam's yeah. a proper fighter man, mate. He's a proper fighter man, do you know what I mean? He comes from a, pedig a pedigree of fighting men. So he'll but, take care of uh, New Bank tonight. I think round eight. I think what's good about Liam is his arms are massive. He's got a strong defence. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> the only ever I've seen him properly is, is when Can Canelo, but that was his body shots. you know what I mean? Just well, if you look that fight... Big, he's too strong. His hands are massive. Do you know what I mean? Just like big. If you if, if you watch that fight back over as well, Kev, I think Liam Smith did the best against Canelo or all the brothers. I honestly do, and and better than most opponents. Callum. Mm. Like yeah, Callum, did. Callum did Callum did well against Canelo because he Callum took in the distance, didn't he? But I think Liam had more successful moments in in the fight. If you get me. Callum a bit more, didn't he? Yeah, he's too strong. Yeah, yeah, he did make me right, kid. He did. He, he definitely did, but it'd be. I hope you enjoyed the boxing at night, Alfie. Mate, it'd be a good show. I'm going to be watching on. Um, I'm going to be watching it myself. Yeah. I, I think. I think you can predict most of the fights. Apart from, I think you can predict the mark beyond you, can't you? Who's going to win? Yeah, no, that, I what's that, son? Get all the predictions wrong. Who does you? Yeah, I went for Spence the other week. He got battered. <laughs> <laughs> Did you actually pick it? Did you pick Spence over Crawford? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I put, I did you? Like, yeah. I, I love Cut Crawford, mate. I boxed on his undercard when he beat Ricky Burns, and honestly, mate, he's yeah. a special, special fighter. I don't. I think he beats Canelo, Crawford. Yeah. I think he'll box Canelo's head off, mate. He's got the boxing ability to keep Canelo yeah. when he boxes. If you watch him, he boxes like he's he's walking on wet cement. Do you know what I mean? His footwork's not the best. Crawford will be in and out all night against him. I know, he's well too big for Crawford now. Canelo was... Well, I could be, don't get me wrong. That, I could be massively wrong there. Yeah. Always going to Johnny turns off because he's got it in his hand. I'm going to. My arms are long. Mm. Right. I'll um we'll finish off we'll finish off lads because it, it keeps cutting off. Well it'll be all together on the interview. This this uh, the app I'm using puts it all together properly. So when's your next fight, Alfie? Uh, October eighteenth. And that's your club show. Yeah, and then I've got the NAGBCs next month. In the glass. Oh well, so have you got in that club show, Kev, mate, you want to announce? Uh, what, what other amateurs have you got in that club show, mate? Louis Zito, Lucas Bishlana, Tony Doddo, and E. Dodson. And e. Dodson, sorry, Tony Dodson's lad. Um, little Tony Preston's going to come back, isn't he? Lee Gray, Jack Gray, little, you know, who else there? that's going to be going on? Um, it's a lot of it, yeah. Little Danny Craggs. Yeah, little Danny Craggs, yeah. There's a few good amateurs in Yeah, do you know? Yeah. Oh, when I'll be coming down to watch it, mate. Um, I'll, do you know what? I'll have to, I'll have to get your autograph. I'll in advance, mate, for when you come and see us in the future, so I can, I can make a bit of money on it. <laughs> you don't want do you know what I mean? Don't want my autograph. You want his? <laughs> no, I want, I want your as well, Kev. Uh, you got any pictures of me and you fighting, mate? <laughs> yeah, I've got pictures. Yeah. Get yeah, a picture printed off of our fight, and obviously you can, you can sign it for me, and we'll have that as well. I'm only messing with you. No, I know you are. I, know, I actually know you are, but I do want, it. I want to pair them. But I'll definitely, yeah. honestly, I want to pair them because both of you, obviously, me and you are boxing, mate. You, you're, you're part of British boxing history, in my opinion. And I think your son's going to go on to do the same thing. So, to have his, to have his autograph would be, um, I'm a boxing fan. It'd be a big thing for me. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll like come that. down, get the, I'll get the Satchel Boys autographs, and um, I'll watch you live, Alfie, mate. It'll be good to see. Yeah, it's uh, nice one, mate. Yeah, right, I appreciate your time, by the way. Good, enjoy your boxing night, right? Yeah, nice one. See you soon. See you later on, my mate. And you, Kev. See you later on, pal. I'll put this on YouTube in the next half hour, right? All right. All right, see you in a bit. Bye, bye, bye.